Howdy YouTube, Esnix here with a video for you. Hope everyone's having a safe and pleasant New Year's Eve. We're going to go over the Monte desktop a little bit. After installing it with my script under Arch, we have my new Mate desktop Easy Archer up and running in VirtualBox here on top of my already customized Mate desktop in Arch on my system. I figured since I'm including this desktop as the sole representative of Easy Archer, I might as well start running it. Um, and you know what? After I got it set up the way I like it, I, it's really nice. It's every bit as good as XFCE was and um, and it looks and works really well. So let's take a look at setting it up. Now if you download my Easy Archer ISO you can install in a number of ways. You can open a terminal and follow the Arch Wiki and do your installation there and you'll have the ability to copy and paste very easily right out of the web browser into the terminal very suitable way to run an Arch install. You can use my own install guides and copy and paste from those. You can run my easy, my easy Arch install scripts or you can run the Calamaris installer. We're going to go with the scripts install. So if you open up the Easy Archer folder in the live desktop, you'll have the BIOS, the UEFI, and the Easy Maint script. Now the maintenance script is just that, it's for after installing. We're going to do this in a legacy setting, so we're going to go for the Easy Arch BIOS. So let's open a terminal. Let's make it a little bigger. It's become root. The root password in the live Easy Archer is tour, T-O-O-R root spelled backwards if you didn't get that right off the bat and let's see we're gonna do easy arch okay it won't let me uh, do that but you know what let's do it this way there we go BIOS we can close that and just look at the menu here. So let's go ahead and start her up. Username, passwords, and hostname, first step. Create a user. Let's um, myself. Let's do a password for the user. Set the password. Well, let's do a root password. And let's make a host name. Cool. Let's choose our device and partition the drive. We're working with a SATA disk. We're going to enter the name. It gives us the output of LSBLK just so we have it handy. We'll do SDA. We're going to choose swap size, 2 gigabytes. We're going to choose the root partition size, 20. And the remainder of the space, whatever is remaining, will be your home partition. So let's create them. And let's format them. And let's mount them. Now, my Easy Arch install scripts, even for the BIOS, use GPT as the partition table uh, format. So, hopefully, most BIOSes, legacy BIOSes, will be able to boot just fine because I set it up, I believe, properly with a boot partition that holds the secondary boot stage of Grub. 
and that's necessary in a GPT setup under the legacy BIOS. There's some buggy BIOSes out there. Uh, I just so happen to have a Dell Latitude E6530 from 2012, 2013, that the BIOS will not boot from a GPT disk, but most BIOSes will. So, just so you know that. Let's go R. We've already done all the partitioning stuff. Let's do the base install. Now my base install includes quite a bit more than just the base and the kernel and the firmware. I figured might as well just put in all the really necessary stuff right up front. It's going to install Grub and this package set here as well as um, oh let's see I don't know it it includes a bit more than your standard arch wiki uh, instructions also defaults to the LTS kernel so if you don't like that excuse me if you don't like that what you can do is once it's booted up you can add whatever kernel you want and remove the LTS it's not a, excuse me not a big deal at all if it is a big deal for you then you probably shouldn't be using something like arch didn't mean for that to sound condescending but it is arch you're supposed to know how to do things for yourself this just gets you started for the lazy it's not for the incompetent it's for the lazy Now what I'll do is I'll pause the video, we'll run through this, uh, we're going to put the Mate desktop on of course, and then when it's all said and done we'll come back up in the booted system and we'll go through setting up the desktop the way I like to set up the desktop, or the way I have it set up in my host system here, my actual install. So I'll be right back. It'll take me several minutes, but for you it'll only be a second. Okay, so we're all back, we're done, we're installed. We have our Easy Archer Mate desktop ready to work with, ready to customize. Now, I've included, besides the uh, built in Mate themes and accoutrements, I've included the Arc theme, uh, GTK themes, the Adapta, I believe. So if we go to system and look at feel and appearance, you can see what I've included. What I decided to go with for myself was one of the built-in ones, the blue submarine. So let's just click on that, let it change. Uh, let's go to background. I have my own backgrounds that I like to use. So let's go ahead and add a folder or add. We're going to add what's in the wallpaper folder here in pictures. So let's select everything and open. And that should add all of them. Might take a moment here to populate. There we go. Cool. So let's pick something that I like. Let's go with something nice and mellow here. See what that looks like. Oh, that's nice. We'll go with it. We'll stick with that. Or maybe we'll go with something a little icier. Let's see. Yeah, it's too gray. Uh, do, do, do. Ooh, this one's nice. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Let's stick with that. Very nice. So we have our theme and we have our background. Let's go to the theme actually. Whoops. Custom. Let's go ahead and customize it and select the papyrus icons. Yeah, cool. And now we can save as, and let's save it as my theme.
cool. So now it's not just custom, it is my theme. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like it. Looks good. So it's coming along. Let's see. I want to get down to one panel. So let's go ahead and duplicate the functionality. We're going to add a workplace switcher. There we go. And we're going to, let's see, add the compact menu. And that it's over there. So let's go ahead and remove and move. Put that all the way at the beginning. Let's go ahead and go to preferences, knock that down to three. Let's go ahead and see this menu is a bit nicer for me. I like this. Gives you the places, the system, and all your programs, and the all-in-one menu here. No, no separate ones. Now, you know what? Let's go ahead and just delete this panel. Cool. What else do we want to add to the panel up here? We want to add... Um, where is it? Notification. Run. Using a menu, using buttons. Window list. I think that's it. Let's see. Well, we've added two. Ah. Okay. Let's keep moving it. Let's put it over there. We certainly don't need the second one. There we go. And let's see what we can do here. Let's see. Certainly want a couple of launchers up there. Let's put Firefox up there. Let's put our email up there. Let's put, uh, what else do we want? Let's put the terminal up there. Nice. Um, accessories. Let's put the text editor up there. There we go. That looks good. Let's move this over just a little bit so get a little bit more space there. Nice. Cool. It is coming along. Let's figure out how to get rid of the desktop icons. Now if we go into deconf editor, yes, I'll be careful. Go to org, mate, desktop, and let's see what are we what are we looking for? Background. All the way at the bottom here, and turn off desktop icons, and we're good with that. No desktop icons. Very nice. I think I pretty much have it set. Got my menu of choice. Nice simple menu, all consolidated. Got some launchers. If we start running software here, it'll start to show up in the window list. Cool. Very nice. Now, a couple of more serious things to take care of. When you use my Easy Arch install script, one thing it doesn't do very well, doesn't do at all, is set the keyboard. At least it doesn't set the keyboard in Xorg. 
we can check this. Let's uh, make that bigger so you can see what we're doing here. Let's become root. And let's do locale CTL status. And you can see the VC key map and the X11 key map are not set. So let's go ahead and set those. Locale CTL set key map. And we're just going to specify US. Just uh, use your country code. And now when we do status, you can see VC key map is set, X11 key map, X11 model, and options are all set. Cool. What else do we want to do? Let's clear this. And let's minimize it for a moment. We're going to go to home folder. We're going to go to downloads. Now, one thing I do, or a couple things, a couple more things I do, are set up a couple Pac-Man hooks. The first is to run uh, a hook to clean the cache every time a package is added, removed, upgraded, updated. And it's done with a Pac-Man hook. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create that. Now the way you create it, let's make that a little smaller. I'm going to copy and paste right from my document. Now this, these help documents are on the live ISO, but when you use my script to install, you have to go download them from my SourceForge page. Now on up on SourceForge in the files where the ISO folder is, there'll be a folder called Docs. Look for the auto cache clean text and the reflector uh, hook text. So we're going we're already root in my terminal, so we don't need to use sudo. So we're just gonna copy and paste here, make a directory, and now we're going to use nano and create a file in that directory. And we are in nano. Now we're going to copy and paste this whole file, the contents here. Now, I'll explain it. I just mentioned it. The operation is to run uh, pack cache on any upgrade, install, or remove. Now, RK1 specifies we're going to keep one level of package history. The default would be three levels of package history, the last three package, last three versions of packages. That's going to take up a lot of space over time. Even one will take up space over time, depending on how much you install and remove. But it's a lot better than three. So let's control O to write out the file and X. And we're done with that hook. Okay, that will run each and every time there's an option to upgrade add or remove a package. Let's do the same thing with the reflector hook. So we already set up our directory when we created the first hook. So now we're just going to add another file. And the contents of the file are right here. Now we're going to change the way the hook, the way reflector is run because a couple of things. Reflector changed recently and their sort uh, system is really slow. So we're not even going to bother with sorting. We're also going to not bother with 24 hours worth of the last updated repos. We're just going to limit it to maybe three hours. That should give us some pretty quick mirrors. I don't need 50 Let's we'll just go with 20 mirrors, the latest 20. And we're going to stick to the country US. So, cool. So let's control O to write it out and X. 
So that will run Reflector um, when Reflector, the Reflector package, is actually updated. You can run it any time you want. However, it'll automatically run whenever Reflector is updated. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to CD right here into our downloads folder and we're going to move, well let's just copy we're going to copy EasyMate into USR local bin and that way the EasyMate script is now in a, uh, a path uh, it's in the path for executables so if we just type in easy gotta spell it right easy mate we get the easy mate script so we can check for failed system D services check the journal logs clean up journal space run a system update clean the package cache check for orphan packages, remove orphan packages, clean up the user cache folder, and regenerate the mirror list. Now the regenerate the mirror list is I forgot exactly what mirror reflective statement I have in there so let's go back take a look. So let's go open our home directory again downloads, that's where it was so let's open this up. Display. There we go. Okay. Our reflector statement here is not the same as the one we have just set up the hook. So what we can do is you can edit this file and then save it to whatever reflector statement you'd like to use. I won't bother doing that, but that's just a note on what to do to get this step 9 in line with what we just did in the hook. There you go, folks. Let's check the logs just in case. Bad value for hide, hide PID. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like there's something going on with PCT CDVD. Hmm. I'm not going to worry about it too much. We'll check on it a little later. Well, not in the video, but it's a good idea to keep abreast of what's going on in your logs. Now, temporarily, what the script does is it runs a command, pipes the output to a temporary file, journal check then opens that in nano. So control X closes nano and you're back to the maintenance script. And there we go folks. Let's clean the cache. Do I want to remove all? Yes and yes. Package cache cleaned. Cool. Done. We can exit and exit and exit. So I hope you enjoyed this little setup video. Getting the Mate desktop looking well like I have it looking and this is very usable for me. If you like the panels at the bottom whoops, if you like the panel at the bottom or anywhere else you can certainly go to properties and change it around. Put it on the left. The I don't like panels on the sides. Let's keep it at the top. Sort of getting used to this. Nice change of pace from the way I had uh, XFCE set up, although very similar. I like it. I like it a lot. Mate is a cool desktop. As I said, Happy New Year. Have fun. Be safe. You'll see me in another video, folks. Bye-bye.